Hi, welcome to this session on Google Sites. Um, I'm running this as a beginner's session, Sites 101 if you like, uh, and it's designed to take you through the process of creating a Google Site from scratch uh, and to creating a number of pages and starting to populate that with resources. Um, I have a fairly mm, defined view of how I like to work on sites. This may not be the way other people do it, but it's certainly the way I do it and certainly the way that works well for me. Um, so you'll either pick up my good habits or my bad habits, but uh, I'm going to try and show you my habits. Um, I'm going to cover in this video all the stuff that you see over here on this menu on the side here, uh, the table of contents, and I'll just quickly run you through that. So the first thing to understand about a site is, uh, and I'm using the, the this is rather meta, I'm having the site within the site here, uh, but this the idea of uh, understanding what a site actually is, because it's, an, it's amazing the number of people who deal with websites on a daily basis, but have never stopped to think about what a site actually is and what are the, the core fundamental ideas of a website. So in really simple terms, uh, you usually have a header, that's this area up here, and the header stays constant on every page and so uh, no matter which page you go to you know you're on the right site because it's got the consistent header. Um, it also has a footer and you'll see down the bottom here um, you'll have a footer at the bottom of the page. Typically in your footer you'll have things like um, copyright notices, it might be a link to a privacy uh, um, privacy policy, that kind of thing, uh, but you'll put that kind of stuff that should be accessible from any point in the site in the footer. You'll also have a navigation and you'll see this side here has a horizontal navigation. You can see as I move my mouse across there, there are buttons across the top. If you've got a site with a small number of pages, horizontal navigation works really well. I find it gets cluttered if you have too many because then they start to form rows. Uh, I personally don't like that but um, it's up to you I suppose. Uh, if you've got lots of links from the main page you probably want to go with, so here's a, here's a site that we've built for our school, um, just for our school laptop uh, policy. We used to give the students a handbook, like a, a, a printed handbook with their laptops and we thought that's pretty silly so we've turned that handbook into a site uh, and so all the information about the site is here. This site here has a vertical menu and you can see the navigations on the side here. But again, it's got a header at the top, it's got a footer at the bottom, it's got a navigation system of some sort, be it vertical or horizontal, and it's got an area in the middle for content. And you can see no matter which page I go to, uh, there's it could be more or less content, so that's just a relatively short page. If I go to this one here, that's a much longer page, and so on. And so the concept of a site then is, you know, have a, a master page, the home page, which links off to subpages. And if you've got more content, you can have subpages under subpages and so on. But uh, I know that seems like a really obvious thing to say, but it's worth just stopping and considering how you want your site to be structured. And I would actually recommend that before you start building a site, you actually get a piece of paper and a pencil and you map out on paper um, how you want the site to be navigated and work out what pages go under what other pages and that will actually dictate a whole lot of stuff about the way you, you set your site up in the beginning. Um, trust me on that when I tell you it will save you a lot of time in the long run. Um, in terms of the header, if you want a header uh, you would create it in something like um, Photoshop or you might use Pixlr Editor or some other online tool but some sort of graphics editing program you can create that header. If you don't want to use a header, if you just want to have a plain text header uh, and I probably have an example of one of those here somewhere. Let's try this page, this one here. So you can see here's an example of a site that doesn't have a graphic header. It just uses a piece of text on the top. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of variations on this theme. Uh, let's, uh, let's go in here and hit the Create button. So I'll click Create. And I have the option to use a blank template or I can browse the gallery for more. Now if you go and browse the gallery you'll find all sorts of really cool looking templates and it's tempting to want to use them and I'm going to recommend that you don't. I'm going to say that you should not use templates at least until you get good at using uh, sites and that might seem a bit um, contradictory you would think that using the template would be a nice easy way to start and then as you get better at it you can start making your own I actually think it works the opposite to that I think you should start by making your own sites even if they're relatively simple because to be honest some of these templates that they provide are so difficult and complex to untangle that it's really hard for a beginner to understand what's going on within uh, most templates. So I would recommend you start from scratch. 
Now, when you do that, so I'm going to use a blank template, so no template at all, and I give my uh, site a name, so I'll call this test site. Now, I can actually use four words here test site for Chris. Okay, and you'll see it does create a, a, a URL here, so this will be the whole URL of the site we're going to. You can change this if you don't like that, but it does need to be unique. And if you're in a Google Apps domain, it needs to be unique within the domain. If you're building this on, say, a Gmail account, it actually needs to be unique in the world. Uh, so you can see it gets a bit trickier to come up with a, uh, a unique name if you're out on a Gmail domain. Um, s selecting a theme, I would recommend you select a theme, but I would, I would suggest, unless you're in a hurry and you want to just knock out something really quickly, that you start with a really simple theme and then um, modify it yourself so it looks the way you want it to look. Uh, an example would be if I go back to that digital citizenship site. So this one was created with a pre-built theme. And if I come back here, you can see there it is there. It's called Terra Water. Um, so I just used that theme and that's the site we got. And it, look, it looks fine. But if you really want to learn how to, how to create sites properly, I do think you should start with a simple theme. So I'm going to suggest that you start with this one simply called Simple. I like that one a lot because it is very simple. So chosen my theme. And I'll go down to more options and just look at the options here. I can give my site a category. Uh, so uh, I might just call this uh, sample uh, test um, summit. Okay, I can give my site a description. I'll just call it sample site. And that's it. I'll scroll to the top of the page here and hit create. And it will chug away for a moment and it will make uh, the, the site. Okay, now if you're doing this on uh, an open Google page, uh, like a Gmail account, uh, you might get a capture code before it allows you to create the site. That's just to stop uh, spam bots from creating automatic sites. All right, so here's the basic site. Now, good, we're good to go. And before we get started, um, I the, the, the temptation is to dive in and start creating pages, and I actually think that's a bad idea. I think you should uh, set a whole bunch of structures in place first, because it just makes it way easier later on. So the first thing I'd suggest you do is to set the privacy options. Uh, who can see this site? And, at the, and let's just have a look. If I click on the More button and go down to Sharing and Permissions, you'll see that this site is currently visible by uh, only me and anyone within PLC Sydney, so within the school I work at. Now, if you, again, if you're doing this on a Gmail domain, you'll probably find this defaults to anyone in the world. It will be visible to. And I'm going to suggest that while you're working on this page you probably just want to make it private so I click change here and you can see I have a number of privacy levels because I'm in an apps domain I get the ones for our organization if you're on a Gmail account you won't get these two here uh, but I want this to be private so I'll just say private and say save okay so it's now a private site I can go back to the to the front page here the next thing I'd do is I'd just change the layout option. So I would decide what I want in terms of uh, uh, navigation and structures and everything else. So let's do that. Let's click on More and go down to Edit Site Layout. Now this is a fairly new um, feature. It used to be done differently. There was, a, there was a layout options in this Manage Site category. But they've moved it into its own category here. So let's click on that. And what it does is it gives you this bar across the top here. So I'm going to theme this up with the same logo that I'm using on the uh, on the Summit site. And it's a graphical I've got it stored on my desktop. So let's look at how we do that. So I'm going to, where it says um, Site Width, first of all, I want to change the width to uh, to 1,000. It's just a size I like using, but you can make yours any size you like. Type 1,000 in there and press Enter. And be patient when you do that because it does some back-end stuff. And you can see the site's actually just changed. If I make that a smaller number, just so you can see the difference, uh, let's make it something like 600, which would be ridiculously small, but let's try it and press Enter. You can see that it has a think and it narrows down the site like that. So that's how you change the width of the site, just by changing that number there. Let's just go back to 1,000 pixels, press enter and wait. Okay, and so it does that there. Now, if you wanted to have uh, horizontal navigation rather than vertical, then you could click here, horizontal navigation, and you can see that it will create 
this we've only got one page so far so it creates this home button and but it creates this row for your horizontal navigation I've still got the vertical or the, the sidebar navigation and it probably doesn't make sense to have both so I'm going to decide which one I want to go with here and I think I want to go with the uh, uh, let's let's go with the horizontal so I'm going to turn sidebar off by clicking this button here and you can see the sidebar navigation goes away all right and what I'll do is I'll build this menu across the top here all right so that's pretty much the way I want it uh, I would like a custom footer so I'll turn that button on there and it creates this area at the bottom and I'll just add some text in there I'll say uh, copyright you see my typings having a bad day today 2013 that'll do for now all right and when I click OK to that it will replace that and put a copyright notice in the bottom you can put anything you like in the footer now as I mouse across here you can see this area turns this light shade so that's the header area this is the uh, horizontal navigation area and this is the footer area and if I want to make changes to any of those areas I simply click in it just like that and it opens up a dialog box now right now um, I've got this little school logo in here and I actually would prefer a custom logo so I'll click custom logo and choose the file I want and it's right here on the desktop and it will upload and again be patient with this don't don't click OK until you see this appear because otherwise it simply won't take so once I've done that I can click OK and it should have a little think there and sure enough so there it is it's put the the header in so far so good so I've got my header I've set this to horizontal navigation and I've put a footer in so I think that's pretty good I'm done with that let's click close right so there's my site now let's just fine-tune a little more um, I'm going to go back up into more and say manage site and you might have noticed that uh, I'll just actually go back you might have noticed on so I just have to refresh this page so I can see the latest version of it there you go uh, you, it still says test site for Chris here even though I've put a header in so I don't want this at all so I'm gonna go to more sorry about the noise here I've got classes going on around me uh, I'll click on the manage site and I don't want this to show so I'll simply untick it just like that I can go down through this page there's a few other settings that's worth looking at um, I can have a search box on my page at the moment it's turned on you can see it's enabled if you don't want the search box you can untick that you can also choose what it searches so if you don't want to search uh, this site you could get it to search all sites within our domain if you're on an apps domain or you could get it to search Google so and you can have one or all of those I'm just going to get it to search this site so okay to that uh, some other things you might want to change here is if you scroll down you'll see there's a checkbox to automatically adjust site to mobile phones very handy option if you're building a site that you'd like people to be able to access uh, on mobile so worth ticking um, and down here under access settings you can now this is not who can edit the site this is who can access the site activity so a user may be able to go to the site and look at all the th things that have happened on the site they may be able to go and see all the things that have changed and you can change who can see that the defaults are probably pretty good but it's worth being aware that that option is there um, if you have a Google uh, Analytics account you can set up analytics here by turning that on and sticking your analytics code in there but um, for the purpose of this exercise I won't worry about that so we'll say save and you'll see Oh, we got to go back. Sorry, that always catches me out. I've got to click that button, and you can see that piece of text is gone from the side there. There's the search box we set up. Uh, right, onto the next bit. Let's make some pages. So, when you're in edit mode, there's some buttons on the top here, and you'll see there's a little pencil. That's the editing button. So, if I wanted to change this page, I would hit the edit button. And if I want to add new pages, there's a button here. So, let's click new page. The shortcut for that is the C key. I don't know why it's C, but it is. So just to keep this really simple, I'm just going to call this page one. And you can select which template to use. Now there are actually uh, five templates if you're on an apps domain, I think four if you're on a Gmail account, um, for different types of pages you could add. While you're learning to use this stuff, I dare say most of the pages you'll choose will simply be a web page. But you could also have announcements, which would basically turn that page into a blog 
style page where you can add posts. There's a file cabinet which is where you can uh, create a page which contains a, a bunch of files. So if you wanted your students to have access to a list of say um, you know PDF documents or you know files of some sort you could create a file cabinet where they could uh, download from. You can create a list so if you're clicking if, you, if you're looking to collect information um, and ask students to contribute say you know uh, the favorite book they've just read you can create a list page where a student can go to that page click a button and add to the list. Um, so they're the four ones I won't cover start page because um, it's specific to Google Apps domains and really most of the time I think you're going to choose web page anyway they should probably be put at the top level that will mean they'll go into the top level navigation alright let's say create and what you should see when we go back to this front page here is we now have a page one created let's just create a few more Oh, when you create a page uh, it opens in edit mode which you'll see I have a save button here so let's just save that okay now that page is created All right let's create a few more let's just make page 2 create and again it opens up uh, in edit mode so we'll say save now you might be wondering why these pages are not appearing here in the navigation I'll show you that in just a second um, let's just make uh, one more page I'll call this one page 3 create so three pages will do for now. You get the idea. So you can just keep clicking this button in the top corner here and it will continue to make pages. All right. Now, we need to adjust this navigation because it's not showing what we want to show. So let's go back to uh, this edit site layout where we were before. And you'll see that um, under horizontal navigation, where we've set it up here, if I click that, the horizontal navigation you actually create manually. So I'm going to add a page in here. So I'm going to add pages one, two, and three. So here's page one. So I'll choose that. And this is a bit of a trap. The OK button is actually off the bottom of the page. So I have to scroll down to see it. it catches people out. So I want page one. I also want to add a page. Let's add page two. Scroll down, click OK. I also want page uh, three, add page, uh, let's choose page three and say OK. And you can also add URLs. So let's say I wanted to have a link on this front page to our school website. So I could click add URL, uh, give it text to display, I'll put it in PLC Sydney. Uh, the URL for that is um, www.plc.nsw.edu.au OK, just like that and say OK and you can see it adds a link in there. Now, this is the order that the, the links are in at the moment. If you didn't want them in this order, and obviously I do, but let's say I wanted page 3 for some reason to be the first page, I can click on it and use the arrows to push it up or down. So I can reorder the pages. If page 2 was a child of page 1, I could choose that and indent it and now it becomes like a sub page of page one. So there's a lot of a lot of power in this little screen here. If you wanted to include things like a site map or a link to the recent site activity, you can turn these on here just like that. Um, in a horizontal navigation, you can also tell it whether you want to be boxes, which is what we've got at the moment, or tabs or links. Uh, I personally like tabs, but your choice. So I'll say OK to that, and when it refreshes, you see here's the navigation we've just put in place. There's the links to the three pages. It always includes the home page, and here's the link out to PLC Sydney that I put in as well. So it's a link to an external site. So uh, pretty straightforward just to, uh, to change the uh, navigation. It's the same kind of thing. I'll just put the sidebar back for a moment, and you'll see it will add the sidebar over here. All right. Now sidebars are a little different. Sidebars are automatically created. If you're clever about the way you do this, you could create a structure where the, the horizontal navigation took you to the main categories and the sidebar took you to sections within each category. Uh, it's just a matter of fiddling with the settings to get that. So there could be cases where you would want uh, horizontal and vertical navigation together uh, if you thought about it. In this case, they're doing exactly the same thing, so they're a bit redundant. Um, unlike the horizontal navigation where we had to go in and set the settings for that, the um, vertical navigation here uh, 
automatically gets created but it does it in alphabetical order and often that's not what you want uh, often you will get pages uh, just put in there in any old order and it won't be the one you want so you do need to usually click in there untick this box that says automatically organize my navigation and then go through the same process again to order the pages the way you want them okay so that's a slightly different thing whether you're doing a vertical or a horizontal navigation I don't want this so I'll just click on sidebar again to get rid of it and once it goes away I'll say close and there you go um, that's the guts of setting up the site really uh, beyond that there's adding content to pages so let's just go to page one here and so if I want to add content to this page uh, I would click the little pencil icon up the top it would open up the page for editing this is essentially a wiki so uh, you know you click the edit button you make your change you click the save button it's done uh, much like other wikis if you've used other wikis um, you notice that this page is it comprises of a single edit field so that's where your edit area is you can change that if you go into layout up here you have the option you see we've got one column simple at the moment you can go to simple two column three column simple you also have this uh, other option here I'll just choose say this two column and what it gives you is a a wide area at the top two columns and then a wide area at the bottom if you choose to not use these wide areas uh, let's say you want one at the top and not the bottom just leave it empty and it will take up zero room once the page refreshes so uh, you, you do have some layout options the trap that a lot of people fall into when they're dealing with web pages is they try and treat it like a word document or a you know an InDesign document where they try and get really specific about uh, the layout of things they want images to be in a certain way and text to wrap around in a certain way and it really doesn't work nicely like that that's simply not the way web pages work so um, uh, yeah I would give up on that idea if I was you and just simply uh, uh, go with the flow you know web pages work the way web pages work and so uh, don't fight it <laughs> um, it really is setting yourself up for a world of pain um, so you'll type your content in here blah 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 blah. so I just put that in there now if you want to add extra content in here um, if you go to this menu up here that says insert there is a bunch of things in here and I probably don't have the time to go through these but it's worth just knowing images if you want to insert an image you can click on the image button and then you can go and upload an image to the site so you'll choose a file find an image uh, I don't know if I've got one here probably not um, and just upload it to the site and say OK and it will just display the image uh, likewise the other common one people would want to use is a YouTube video so again video you choose your you choose which one you want here so let's say it's YouTube uh, and you simply paste the URL of the YouTube video in there decide whether you want borders and titles and all that sort of stuff and then it would paste it in there um, other common ones that you would use uh, a table of contents and again you can see the table of contents on the side here table of contents work if you've put your text in using styles and by what, what by that I mean if I put in um, some text onto this page here I have the option of formatting it using heading levels so heading 2 heading 3 heading 4 or normal paragraph text and so long as you structure your text using headings then when you create by inserting a uh, table of contents it will actually automatically structure the table of contents for you based on the heading levels you've created so that's kind of neat it, it is pretty important with web pages that you stick to that sort of um, heading style kind of approach to creating text it really does save a lot of headaches later on um, but you can add in here charts you can if you've got a document you can embed the document into here you can insert whole folders full of stuff from your Google Drive uh, there's maps, photographic slideshows. You can stick in uh, a Google presentation slideshow. You'll see one at the very bottom of this page. Uh, and and so there's there's lots and lots of options in this insert menu that are probably outside the scope of this particular talk, but uh, we might be able to have a play with those. Uh, and that's basically it. When you get to the end and you've built your site, you've added all your content, you've got your pictures and videos and text and whatever else might go in here and you consider it ready to show people don't forget I'll just save that don't forget to go back to the more menu back to sharing and permission and turn it off private so other people can see it so if you are ready to publish it now you can publish it within your organization by clicking that 
uh, or you can publish it to the web by clicking that or you know there are some other options there um, that make that slightly more private but not very much but I'm a public kind of guy so I put everything public on the web um, and that's basically it um, sites is pretty powerful uh, there's there's a lot more you can do with it but within the constraints of the time we've got here oh sorry there's one more thing I wanted to show you and that is the uh, to customize if you want to customize the way things look so let's just go back to the site so for example you see this site's got this gray background uh, and it's there's a certain sort of style of text here being used if I want to change that if you go to more manage site and then to the section that says colors and fonts you'll find that every part of the page is in this list here so if I scroll down there you'll see everything on the page and if you if you've heard of a thing called CSS this is all the CSS definitions here cascading style sheets um, so for example page background color if I click on that then over here I can choose now at the moment it's using the default for the theme the simple theme or I can have none in which case it just turns white or I can say custom and I can pick my own color so let's go with say a nice yellow so there you go it's showing there in the yellow color uh, if I wanted to have say um, uh, let's try the let's say you don't like the font on the page you can click that and say custom and then you can choose a different font so I'm um, going to choose something where you can see it's different not that I'd actually use it but let's say this one because it will be really obvious so you can see there it changes all the font on the page um, and that will affect all your headers and everything else it's just a master style for all the text um, I don't recommend you do that <laughs> personally I guess you can do what you like though um, let's go back to normal and, and so the same thing if you want to change anything about this if you want to change the color of these buttons for example you can scroll down here till you find uh, so horizontal navigation here and we've got horizontal navigation background color uh, so that would be the button so let's choose that let's make our buttons green so I'll choose the green and there you go so we've got green buttons uh, this one didn't go green because that is the uh, selected is it um, horizontal navigation selected background color because we're on the home page it's a selected tab so it can be a different color so let's choose that go to custom let's make that one red and you can see it goes red and so you do have quite a bit of control over the color scheme and that's what I mean by not just choosing a template in the beginning but rather choosing a simple template and then making these changes to it you learn an awful lot more about the way this works and once you understand this it makes it far simpler to go back to a pre-built template <laughs> and pull it apart and uh, and actually start to understand what's going on so there you go look I, I'm sorry this is such a long video uh, but hopefully that will step you through uh, many of the things we've covered in the session and uh, you get a chance to revisit anything you weren't sure about thanks for watching <laughs>